Sandra. So this is the last day here, and uh, we'll see you together. I'll we'll see you together. We're going to leave for school tomorrow. So we thought we would show you guys uh, some of the places we're really, really gonna miss. Our hangout spot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you. Kinda. I'm gonna miss you guys. So uh, check it out. Enjoy. See what we do. All right, here we are at one of our favorite places to come shopping. It's pretty low key. There's a really cool shoe store right down there. That's where you get those, huh? Coming up to another cool place. This is just like this whole spot right here. When we graduate from college. We are totally getting this condo. Right here. All right, we're here right outside of one of our favorite restaurants here in downtown Bethesda. They've got great food, great drinks. We know the owner. He loves us. We interrupt our program to bring you this breaking news story. We are getting reports of multiple explosions in downtown Bethesda. We don't have much information at this point whether this was a terrorist act or an accident, but eyewitness reports state at least an area of two city blocks has been destroyed. There are reports of hundreds of casualties and emergency responders are trying to reach the area. Obviously there is a lot of debris covering the streets, so fire and police are having a difficult time reaching the victims. Meanwhile, all access to downtown Bethesda has been blocked and only emergency vehicles are being allowed in. So if you have family or friends in the area, we ask you to please stay tuned and we will update you as soon as possible. News Chopper 15 is on its way to the scene and we will bring you pictures as soon as possible. Just to recap, multiple explosions have been reported in downtown Bethesda. At this time, it is still unclear whether this was a terrorist. No community is immune from the shattering effects of disaster. In 2004, the leaders of three Bethesda, Maryland hospitals with distinctly different missions recognized the risks their community faced if a disaster occurred. They chose to work together in a pioneering partnership to ensure a coordinated and sustained hospital response. Washington, D.C., of course, is the nation's capital. Uh, we learned in a terrible way on September 11, 2001, uh, that we are going to be a target. Uh, we are the symbol of America's power. It was quite clear that we had absolutely no plan for coordination of efforts, and that really it was each hospital on its own. And uh, Admiral Arthur was is, is quite a guy and quite a thinker, and we were sitting in his office, and he, he stepped up and he walked over to an aerial photograph in his, in his office, and he pointed um, to this area where you could actually see the National Naval Medical Center. You could see NIH in the middle, and then you saw Suburban. And he said, you know, I've also been thinking about this. And he said, we have here a medical megaplex. And by creating a unique partnership between a military facility, um, a research organization, and the regional trauma center, we could do something very different here. I think everyone recognizes that in times of distress and in times of disaster, most of what you plan is not going to go the way you've planned it. When you're talking about a mass casualty event, uh, it's very rare, in fact, I, I, be hard-pressed to identify any institution that by itself uh, can respond adequately. So in that regard, knowing one another, partnering with people, meeting counterparts, uh, coming together, doing dress rehearsals, uh, doing exercises is a uh, is wonderful way of coming together to make sure that we can, in times of emergency and disaster, actually make that happen. Hoping is not a public policy solution. You have to prepare, you have to do the exercises, and you have to have the resources to do it. And that's what the Bethesda Emergency Partnership is all about. Early in the joint efforts, a collaborative leadership structure was put in place. Representatives from each hospital met every week and developed solid working relationships. Plans were put in place to ensure communication systems interoperability, share hospital beds and disasters, and to share resources, equipment, and supplies. While planning was critical, testing these joint plans was equally important. Beginning in 2004, the Bethesda hospitals conducted a major disaster response exercise called the Collaborative Multi-Agency Exercise, or CMAX. We all know that in a mass casualty event, uh, the danger is you have pandemonium, you have people going in a million directions, and when the event happens, you don't want that to be the first time that you've gone through this exercise. This whole partnership is built on the idea that 
given that we have these wonderful facilities pretty close to each other and on good working relationships, we have a kind of a uh, luxury of thinking through things ahead of time and, and finding out what we want to do and being prepared and testing out some of these ideas to be sure that if and when a problem arises that we can work together. We are at the National Naval Medical Center, as are most people in the medical profession, in the readiness business. Our job is to be ready at any time to respond to any threat. CMAX is basically a collaborative effort to bring everybody together and find out through dry runs and rehearsals where are the kinks in your process when you try to talk to each other. It can be something as simple as not knowing the common radio frequencies to misunderstanding what somebody's trauma capability is. In 2008, the National Library of Medicine, whose mission is organizing and providing access to health information, joined the Bethesda Hospitals Partnership. The National Library of Medicine, the world's largest medical library, plays a critical role in translating biomedical research into practice. National Library of Medicine in, a, in an emergency partnership, how does that work together? Well, quite simply, they're in the business of information. And once we recognized that and said they would be a natural partner here, this thing has really um, taken off. Because if you think about what the biggest problem is in any crisis, it's communication and moving information. Yeah, well, National Library of Medicine, like most medical libraries, has really um, a focus on communication. And of course, in disasters and emergencies, communication between the participants is really critical. So we had some techniques that could be added and, and help the, the group that we uh, came in with. We've been doing this for 20 years and are, are delighted to see all this kind of come to fruition, at least fruition in a test setting, uh, with these uh, three wonderful partners out here. One goal of the Bethesda Hospitals Partnership is to expand the science of emergency management. With congressional funding, the partners launched a research program in 2008 aimed at exploring new ways to sustain disaster communications, manage patient data, and educate hospital personnel. Coordinated by scientists at the National Library of Medicine, 11 projects are underway to evaluate innovative strategies to improve care in a disaster. One project is testing the use of a radio frequency identification device, or RFID, to track patient movement through the hospital. This will provide hospital leaders with real-time information about how many patients they are caring for and where the patients are receiving care. Another project is evaluating a system known as the Lost Person Finder, which is being designed to reunify family members by capturing basic patient information, including photos. When many patients need care, triage permits the hospital to determine priorities. Triage notes taken by a nurse or physician are customarily written on a paper form that can be lost or damaged. The hospital's partnership is testing the use of a digital pen containing a tiny camera that captures the written triage notes. This critical patient data can then be transferred to an electronic database where it can be preserved. It's also immediately available to other clinicians and decision makers in the hospital's emergency command center. The innovative strategies used in this partnership can be used in many other communities in the U.S. Well, I've been privileged to work with my colleagues uh, to obtain federal funding. Uh, congressional support uh, for this project is very high because Congress recognizes that this is a very important national model uh, on how you can respond to mass casualty events. And so our hope is, is that this model will serve as a template for other partnerships uh, around the country to capitalize on the strong capacity of each of the hospitals in the neighborhood uh, and to create a plan so that people communicate. Make the effort, uh, get together, if nothing else just start talking informally and find out that many of you have the same challenges. You will also find out things that you hadn't considered and they will learn from you. And this is exactly what's happened here. This all started initially with just a few phone calls from a few senior people it's now blossomed into a collaborative effort that involves a fair amount of resources, technology, and personnel. And we are much, much better prepared today to deal with a mass casualty in this area as a result of our collaborative efforts. So we need to make sure that we leverage the best of each particular entity as we come together and we build the plan as we do uh, the preparation for the disaster. 
We're on a journey. It's not a destination. We'll never reach perfection, so we keep striving for it. But I'm confident with the passion and the expertise that's coming from all the components around here in the BHEP that we're going to make a real difference for the community.